So before there was a circus, I knew this guy. And he, he kind of dropped out of my life for a while. And he came back about the time we were starting to take all of this really serious. And in this really fast time, I watched this change come over him that I've seen in a lot of people where it went from, I like this stuff, I love this stuff, I am this stuff. Now, I, I got to give you some perspective. I, I, I got to build somebody up here. This is a person who's had my back since he's shown back up so many times. Let me, let me give you a real idea. So I'm standing on a pair of stilts in a men's room. And I realized I forgot to put on my tie. And I'm not yet wearing pants. I so wish I was lying and not on camera now. I got into the story thinking this was a great idea. No. And so I'm standing up there, and he walks into the stall and says, give me your tie. And he puts it around his neck, and he ties it into a perfect Windsor knot, and he hands it back to me and hands me my pants. I cannot give you a better definition of friendship. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one of our very own, proud to be bringing him up the ranks, Valos. <laughs> I almost forgot. First timer! <laughs> I love you too. What? Don't throw anything at me. It's, you know, oh, this is where I'm supposed to make the, you know, the standard comment about the lights or something. It's like, it's like doing a command performance for the sun. <laughs> I hope you'll forgive my voice. I woke up this morning and my larynx was like, today's a good day to be slightly inflamed. But it does allow me to do that wonderfully low, hello, ladies. <laughs> Look at your clown, now back to me. Now back at your clown, now back to me. <laughs> Sadly, your clown isn't me. <laughs> All right, so this is, this is something that's been bumming around my head for a while, so I figured it was a good time to get it out. I am a bad drummer. Some of you may have heard me say this before, but for those that are new, I'll say it one more time. I am a bad drummer. Getting my left hand and my right to work in cooperation is akin to brokering peace treaties in the Middle East. <laughs> and when it comes time to tap that little kick drum, turns out my foot's gone on a little sightseeing tour of the Alaskan coastline and <laughs> failed to tell me. <laughs> oh, don't blame him, I, the pictures were great. I find that multitasking and syncopation are these little hobgoblins just out of reach, laughing at my attempts to grab them. I look at people like Neil Peart and Dave Grohl and Keith Moon. Yeah, some of the best drummers to have graced the stage in recent memory. I watch them perform and I see the ease, the smoothness, which their hands glide across the kit, making the drums sing a song of their skill, and the cymbals dance with their delicate touch. I watch them perform, I hear that joyful noise, and I think, my appendages will never broker a treaty capable of making that kind of majestic beauty. But then I realized something. Once upon a time, they were bad drummers. Long, long ago, in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> They had hands that were fighting for dominance and feet that were too lazy and distracted to be bothered to learn rhythm. Back before the 10 minute solos and the screaming fans, 
their parents were screaming. <laughs> and they were the bane of their neighbors. There was no majesty at that point. It was raw and it kind of hurt. But they didn't see their flaws, their lack of skill. When they looked at their drum kit, ah. sorry, <laughs> I've been tweaking this all day. When they looked at their kit, they saw the future. They saw their moments of glory. Their appendages weren't bickering antagonists. Their alliances to be forged and seeing compassion and multitasking weren't laughing demons. They were beasts to be tamed and brought to heal. When they saw their drums, it wasn't their present failures they saw, but instead their future successes, their triumphs. This is a community with mountains for goals and giants walking around performing. It is so easy to see the heights to which we aspire and the people who are so good and feel that you will never reach them. We look at Lena and see an amazing Hooper. We see Russ and such a great contact juggler. You can look around you and see innumerable people who are incredible at any number of things. But we didn't start incredible. I was there the day Russ first picked up a contact sphere. And let me tell you, he wasn't great. And Lena would kill me if she heard me say this. I've seen her drop. No. <laughs> We've all had to slough through the days when we weren't any good to reach the days where we amaze. I know so many people who have picked up a new toy or whatever has caught their fancy for today excited with the possibilities of it, eager to learn, only to put it back down a week later after stumbling over the first few hurdles. I know so many who have never made it past the doldrums, past the dull drums. Ha <laughs> ha. I've done it myself, and so I implore you, when you pick up that next prop or instrument or whatever has tickled your excitement this time, don't look at tomorrow and the, the struggles and, and frustrations that you're feeling, but don't keep your eyes on next year and this ideal of some perfect performance. Instead, keep your eyes on next week when that trick you're having so much trouble with started to click. See, not the stumbles and the missteps of now, but instead the successes and the burgeoning talent of then. And remember, don't fear the drop. Each drop is but a cadence, a drumbeat in your progression. For you, you are a bad drummer right now, but I see, I see the day when you rock. Thank you.